John 15, 15 says, there's no greater love than for one to lay down his life for his friends. If you love your friends, you'll be able to lay down your life for them. Believe me, when people talk about love, I seem to doubt if really they believe in anything like love. The kind of love I've seen so far in the world is where people tell you they love you, but all they want is your boom boom if you're, a, if you're a girl. They tell you they love you, but all they want to do is to steal your mind and steal your wisdom and steal your knowledge. That kind of love ain't love at all. You see people say terrible things about the people whom they say they are their friends. I'm sure you live in this world and you must help yourself and must have heard people say terrible things about you while you still say terrible things about them, yet you still claim that you, your friends. That kind of friendship is not a friendship that God seems to want. That Jesus Christ in the book of John 15, 15 has to say that what greater love is there than the one that the brothers should lay his life down to his own friend. God wants to take us to the stage where we can lay down our life for our brethren. Can you lay down your life for your brethren? When Jesus Christ was talking about laying our life down for brethren, he was actually trying to call back. He had in mind what really happened to you and I, you and I and God at the Garden of Eden. When we, when we were still in Adam, betrayed God. We betrayed God by disobeying the very law that He had kept that could keep it, could have saved us from dying. When we disobeyed God, trying along with the devil to try to get the wisdom and probably out scoop God, outstage God out of his own position. We found ourselves being outstage, removed from where we we were supposed to be. Now, because we were no longer in favor with God, no longer in the good books of God, we were thrown out of paradise. And God Almighty, in His infinite mercy, even right from Genesis, prepared Jesus Christ. Remember, He prepared Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ coming down here, died for us. Abraham, Adam, and Eve were friends to Jesus, to God. When Jesus Christ was talking about friends, somewhere in the book of John, whether 16, 14, chapter 14 to 15, I can remember exactly where he said, I called, I, you were my friend, because I told you, I'm telling you what the Father tells me. When, when God starts telling us things about himself, he's making us friends. When you find yourself talking about what you have to another person, it is an act of friendship. It is, it is friendship that pushes you to talk to people about yourself. Now, we've, we've, we've betrayed that confidence God had for us and are supposed to actually die. But then God Almighty, when we had been thrown out of the Garden of Eden, He, in the person of Jesus Christ, came down to earth, died, so that we can become friends again, so that we can fellowship with Him again. He died for us so that we could be friends. Can you die for your friends? Can you die for your friends? Now we're talking about dying for friends here. Apart from dying for your friends who are human beings, can you die for God? Now dying for God does not mean you can you should be in arms killing other human beings. No, it's far away from that. Dying for your friend and dying for God is living the way God expects to live. And the way God expects every one of us to live is the way Jesus Christ lived when he was here on earth. When I decide to live the way Jesus Christ lived, and I decided to do everything that Jesus did while he was a hero on earth. I am dying for my friend. When I decide to be good, even when it's terrible to be, I am dying for my friend. When I chose not to save myself, but I decided to save Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I am dying for my friend. Die for your friends. Do what God said you should do. Die for your friends. Do what Jesus Christ said you should. Die for your friends. Die for your friends. Die for your friends. 